I'm Jonas Clark, and welcome to Kingdom Living. Today we have with us Apostle David Coker, all the way from Carnesville, Georgia. Welcome, Apostle David. Glad to be here. You know, Apostle David, I've known you for a long time. We've been working together for a long time, especially overseas, um, getting people saved, getting them baptized with the Holy Ghost, casting out devils, doing all the kind of fun things. But, you know, um, I want to talk to you about the apostolic church, okay? We already know, I mean, people quote it all the time in Ephesians where Paul got a revelation from the Lord right. about the apostolic, what we would call the apostolic church, where after Jesus ascended, mm -hmm. he gave gifts to men, some apostles, not everybody, but some apostles, right. some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, right. for the work of the ministry. Apostle David, let's discuss why this is important and what it means today. Right. You know, when the Lord first gave me the revelation of the apostolic, I really didn't know what to expect. But ten years later, uh, I realized that this is the this is the only kind of church that we see in the New Testament. If we if we study the Word of God, we find out, of course, in Jerusalem, the uh, the Jerusalem church, the the, the the predominant ministry there was the ministry of the apostle. We find that to be so in Antioch, in Samaria, and in Ephesus. And uh, so the, the apostolic church is a church that God always uses a, 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 an apostle with an apostolic anointing to birth his church. That's his way of doing things. And then that, uh, for instance, let me say it this way. When Paul, we read in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians, how that there were gifts and manifestations of the Spirit, and uh, even different uh, members of the body, and how they fit together. Well, none of these things existed until the Apostle Paul went there. And when God does anything in his earth, he does it through his body. He does it through man. And so God used a man by the name of, of, of Paul to establish a church, and, and God used through that man all of these giftings, all of these graces, the different members came into place because of the apostolic anointing. And any time we have an apostolic church, this is what you're going to see. You're going to, have, you're going to see all these giftings, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Maybe not to begin with, eventually that's what you're going to see. And each one of these giftings brings something different to the table so that the saints are fully uh, equipped to do the work of the ministry. Uh -huh. And so we also see then that there is a fathering anointing that comes with the apostolic ministry where the, the people are no longer thought of and, and, and respond as sheep, but as sons and daughters of the house That's a good point. That, yeah. that, that love their father and that they, they have a relationship with their father. And, uh, and, and then they follow God, but they follow uh, God the Father by seeing that fathering anointing that is manifested through the gift of the apostle. You know, I think there's there's a whole there's there's actually confusion about this. To me, the apostolic church is different than let's put it this way: it's a model of ministry. Okay, exactly, yes. Uh, it's different than what I call the pastoral only model. Right. What I mean by that is that you know all of us, or most of us were brought up in what I call a pastoral-only model of ministry. So our relationship with a, a church leader or our, our understanding of a church is the, the gifting of a pastor. Right. But the churches that we read about in the New Testament were pioneered, they were started not by a pastor. A right. pastor was not called to do that. Right. A pastor was called to pastor people. Mm -hmm. But the anointing, the gifting on an on an apostle, according to Apostle Paul in, it, in the book of Ephesians, mm -hmm. was a gift that would build, restore, govern, pioneer, confront, right. deal with doctrines and things like that. Exactly. It seems to me like the apostolic church is way more aggressive, way yeah. more dominion minded, right. way more on the the edge right. of advancing the kingdom of God. It's really all about Jesus. Right. And it's all about what he did to restore mm -hmm. the kingdom. Right. And now he's put that responsibility in our hands, the hands of the church. Jesus said, I'll build my church, mm -hmm. and the gates of hell will not prevail. Church meaning more than just a 
group of people right. that are praying at Starbucks. Right. It is actually a governing church. You know, the apostolic church is a governing church because Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Right. Now, when you started, I remember when we talked about this, that, that you uh, woke up one morning and it just felt like you had a bunch of hats, oh, yeah. a hat yeah. on, right? Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us uh, what was going on with you with that. Well, this was in a time of speaking, and um, I had really been uh, pressing in through fasting and praying. And I woke that morning, and, and in this dream or this vision, but I was, uh, whether I was completely awake or completely asleep, I couldn't tell you. But I was standing in front of a congregation, and I opened my Bible and was going to read the Word and begin to speak the Word. And when this happened, I realized there was a hat on my head. I could see the shadow of it on the lectrum. And so I reached up, and I took the hat off of my head and started to read the Scripture again. When I did, I realized there was another hat on my head. Well, the Lord began to show me then that uh, I had uh, those layers of hats represented layers of religion that had been put on me. You see, and he said to me that day, he said, you've accepted church the way it was handed to you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about it, that when we came into the kingdom, when we were, when we were saved, uh, we didn't know anything. Right. And so yeah. whatever they told us was church, that's what we thought church was. Yeah, or they modeled, uh, whatever they modeled. Whatever they modeled yeah. it. It's what we thought church was. So they actually gave us a vision of what the church yeah. is, even though it may or may not be biblical. Right. Absolutely. Because, because, like he said, you accepted church as it was handed to you. So they handed us this model, mm -hmm. and they said, this is what church is. And, of course, it was a, a pastoral model. It was a one-man show model. Mm -hmm. It was a model where the pastor did all the work, and he cared for all the sheep. And it's a very loving and caring and protecting type atmosphere because that is the, 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 the anointing and the grace that's on the pastor. But you said it earlier that the apostolic church is more just about meeting the needs of people, but it's training and equipping people because you can nurture people and meet their need without ever changing their life. And in the New Testament, we see that Paul, I believe, was the model apostle for the ascension gift apostles. Yeah, can you tell us why? Why, well, you, why you feel that way? Well, because he was the he he did not know Jesus personally. He was not. He wasn't one, among the the, the, the lamb, the, the lamb, the, the twelve apostles of the lamb. He was not yeah. one of them. Yeah. And so he only met Jesus after Jesus had been raised from the dead, like you and I did. I mean, yeah. we, we came into a saving knowledge. So he of so the Lord. he 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 didn't walk the streets. No. With Jesus, like right. like James, or excuse me, like 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 Peter, Peter. did, or John, yeah. or Matthew. Yeah. So he was. He came into his apostle, or he was actually called after the resurrection. Right, right. And so that, after the after, so that's why we use the terminology ascension. Ascension, gifts. yes, yes. After Jesus ascended on high, right. and Paul received his revelation of what he knew about Jesus and the church, because right. he's the one that gave us the the, uh, uh, the the revelation of the body of Christ. He learned that from Jesus through revelation. Right. Yeah. And see, his ministry was more than just getting people saved and caring for them and meeting their needs, although that was important to him. But he wanted to present every man perfect or mature because only mature, strong Christians can, can uh, uh, establish the culture of the kingdom of God. And that's what we need today, strong apostolic churches. That's the only th hope this world's got today. Yeah, Be yeah and you use the terminology strong. You know, thank God for pastors. Okay, oh, we yeah. need pastors. Yeah. Yeah. But the model that we see here of the church or the design, mm -hmm. church meaning a governing body of believers. Right. Now, yeah. you know what? I want to say this because there's people. Let me let me share this with you. There is no apostolic church in the New Testament that wasn't built around one of those ascension gifts. Right. Okay. The, the gift of God, this five-fold ascension gift calling, let's say. I like to look at it like apostles, prophets, and teachers being the more governing right. of the three yeah. than pastors and evangelists. You know, uh, an evangelist gets people saved, but that's, that's it. He's done. Mm -hmm. Okay? He doesn't need to pastor them because he's not called to do it. Mm -hmm. All right? So there is a difference. But, see, when we look at the model, the model is that there is a set man. Right. For example, the church that I that I am the set man of in Howland Beach, Florida, right. that church did not exist until I got there. Exactly. And 
the reason that it exists today is not because I'm brilliant. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. It's all about the gift of God in yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And so the gift of God in me, sent God sent me to a territory. Mm -hmm. There was nobody, there was no one in my church because there was no church there. Exactly. But then when, when, the, when I began to minister, the word went out, then it, it began, that gift began to draw people exactly. Exactly. around me. Okay. Exactly. The point I'm making is this. There is no church without government. Exactly. Okay. Can you comment on that? Well, actually, it, that's true. You know, there are many uh, great organizations out there. I mean, there's, uh, uh, you know, full gospel businessmen. There's uh, the Gideons. There's many. But these are not churches. A church is not a church until government is established. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a, a city is not a city until government is established. Um, so even when we use the analogy of the physical body, there is always a governing part of that body, which is the head. There's always a structure to the physical body. With the church is uh, called a house. There's a structure to a house. There's a structure to a family. You know, you can you can meet one member of the family, but that doesn't mean you met the whole family. See? Right. And yeah. so, yeah. so then uh, the church is not a church until government is in place and the government of the church is going to be made up of these ministry gifts primarily he said notice apostles prophets and teachers he said god set these in the church god set them in the church apostles prophets and teachers and then he said after that right. and so there is a structure and if you'll notice every time you read about apostles and prophets apostles are always listed first Anytime you read about prophets and teachers, prophets is always listed first. Right. The anointing always flows from the top down, Psalms 133. So God has a, a, a structure. God has government. God has order in his house. Yeah, you know, it's hard, it's hard in the, in the, in the in, you know, we don't have a lot of time to really get into this. But, you know, Apostle David, you and I have discussed this. When we go to the nations, we see that the faults are people that teach about the apostolic. Right. First of all, they're not apostles. Exactly. And they misrepresent what the true apostolic church is about. Right. What's, what, what have you seen with that? Well, you know, I just recently I was reading some materials that talked about all the different uh, kinds of apostles that exist today. And, uh, you know, we talked about this. Uh, there's... Uh, even 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 uh, what they call marketplace apostles. There's no such thing as a marketplace apostle. There are there are wonderful businessmen. There are people who are anointed to do business and to, and to make money for the kingdom of God. But they're not apostles. You know? Yeah, in the sense of Ephesians chapter four. Right, right. These are to, apostles of set in the church. Right, in the church. That's what he right. said. Yeah. yeah. And notice that there are certain characteristics of all of these gifts. They all have a divine call. They all have a, a, an anointing to preach or teach, right. you know. Um, and, and so there are certain characteristics that you don't see in a person that's, uh, that may be sent into another uh, area of life or to a business or education or, or, or even uh, the political scene. Right. But, but when not, it comes to dealing but with... But when it comes to the church and it comes to the, the, the ministry gifts, there's only five. Yeah, because, you know, you mentioned to me that there was somebody talking about horizontal apostles, vertical apostles, hyphenated apostles, yeah. congregational apostles. Yeah. Isn't that what you were saying? Yeah, yeah. Marketplace apostles. Yeah. I mean, and just on and on with all types of apostles. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I still don't know exactly what a hyphenated apostle is. <laughs> but, you, but you told me that someone had written that in order to be a congregational apostle, you had to have 800, at or least more. 800 people or more yeah. in your church. Now, can you share what scripture that, that is? <laughs> I, I, huh? I wish I could because it is so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. I mean, we're talking about some yeah. of the misrepresentations yeah. of the apostolic. Yeah. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with the real function of an apostle according to Ephesians 4 exactly. and according to, to looking at the life style of the apostle paul right so now how, what do you say to a to a a young couple that have pioneered church and they only have 799 members oh boy 
Well, they, according to this book, they, they can't be apostles. But if that one person comes through the back door. That's see, it. They've yeah, arrived. They've arrived. So now this would give them what? Some kind of status to get on a, a national television broadcast? I can, I can only imagine. But think about this. Think about how ridiculous this is. Think about if there was a little tribe, a little village somewhere. And, and I mean, it had never been reached by man. And, and somebody was flying over uh, this, this mountain and saw this group of people. And, and God laid it on their heart. You know, I want you to go and, and learn the culture. I want you to learn their customs. I want you to learn their language. And the man spends his whole life, and he gives his whole life to win that, that, that group of people, which might not be over 50 people, you know, in the whole right, village. Right. So you're telling, and he lays his whole life down. And you're telling me that that man's not an apostle because he doesn't have a big church? Yeah. See, that's how ridiculous this is. As a matter of fact, from what I can find in the Scripture, Paul himself never preached to over 276 people, and that were those that was that was on the ship with him when he was shipwrecked. So, <laughs> you know, his, his his church was not as big as churches. So we wouldn't have. even acknowledge of Paul today. Then no, he didn't. He didn't. He, he didn't, didn't meet a, the criteria. He didn't meet the criteria. <laughs> You know, I see, I see some of the main characteristics of of an apostle. You know, and you know what? I got to say this: the the apostles that I know today, they they're not caught up in the titles. They really mm -hmm. aren't. But they are concerned that there are people that are taking the title that don't have the function. Exactly. So some of them have made the decision. You know what? We need to to use the title, even though we really don't want to. Only. So that the people can see, you know, wait a minute, you, there is a true apostolic function. Mm -hmm. Just because a person has a business card and calls himself an apostle doesn't mean he's doing the work of the ministry. There are some, what I, I consider, fundamental truths or fundamental things within the pattern of an apostle that we can see. The people need to know about it because, see, if you don't understand the gift of an apostle, you can't draw from that apostle, right, okay? Exactly. What you'll try to do is try to get the man to give you something he ain't got. He doesn't yeah. have, okay? Yeah. But some of the main fundamentals would be, number one, apostles are builders. Exactly. So now, if, if you haven't built anything or aren't, you know, then I would suspect there's something wrong here. Exactly. Because the apostles that I know in the world, they've actually, they have built something. It's visible. You can see it, touch it. It's there, okay? Right. And it's, it, it, it didn't happen overnight. Right. It takes time to build. Yeah. There's opposition in building. I'm not talking about inheriting something daddy built. Right. I'm talking about the gift of God in a man or a woman that mm -hmm. built something. The other thing is the word um, restore. Mm -hmm. You know, apostles recognize that we are part of the restitution or the restoration of all things. Right. That's found in the book of Acts, chapter 3, 19 through 21. Right. It, it says that the heavens are holding the Lord until the times of the restitution of all things. Right. Right. So, in other words, the Holy Ghost showed it to me like this, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. My point is that apostles are concerned with the restoration, the advancement of the kingdom of God. Absolutely. You know, in Romans 8, it talks about that whole, all of creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, what does he mean by the manifestation of the sons of God? Well, we know that you and I are sons of God. We've been born again. Well, when we were born again, uh, as children of God, that didn't mean we were fully grown or fully mature or fully manifested. Mm -hmm. And see, if the church was going to be fully manifested without these gifts and without this revelation, I think they would have gotten it done in 2,000 years, don't you? Right. But see, we still lack that level of maturity, of, of being fully manifested. In other words, becoming everything that God wants us to be. It's time the church grows up, see? Right. And growing up sometimes, that's why the apostle comes into play, because it's not comfortable to have to change. It's not comfortable to have to grow. There are such certain things as, as growing pains that have to take place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but only, but Jesus, is, is, Jesus is waiting. He is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. This earth is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's well, is it possible to, for sons to manifest without fathers? How could they? How could they be? Because we know, we know, we know that apostles have a. They carry this father and son. There's just something about them. They feel like they're fathers. Yeah. It's because it's the anointing. Yes. You know. And, and but you know, you and I both know. We, you and I, because I know your ministry. You know something about mine. 
I've actually, when I've visited, or maybe I go minister in another house, and some of my sons and daughters will go with me, and they'll just be, you know, waiting on me. They'll be bringing me, toting my Bible for me, toting my coat. They'll they'll pour me something to drink. They'll make sure that I'm taken care of. And I've been in churches where people didn't understand. Did he make you do that? No. I didn't do anything to make them do that. It was the gift, that fathering, loving gift on the inside of me that they responded to, and they look at me as daddy, and they take care of daddy. But see, there you hear again, that's a gift. That's, that's, that's the gift in operation. You and I can't make that happen. Right. You know, I was talking to someone last night who took me back to the hotel room in the conference here and uh, after the conference, and they were going to come back and, and, and vacuum the floor and do all of these things, work. Well, and, and I'm thinking, wow, there's a lot of work that goes into this conference. People are doing it. But why are they doing it? Because they, have their, their, they understand that I'm helping Daddy do what God wants to be done here. There's a sense of purpose, see? Right, so the Father is bringing that. Yeah. The other word that I, that I like to use is um, the word govern. You know, if, if you look at apostolic churches, when I, when I talk about an apostolic church, I'm talking about a church pioneered mm -hmm. by an apostle, right. a sent one, called of God, not of a pulpit committee, right. not, not voted in, it's not, not a congregational. Not sent for, just right. who sent by Somebody God. called of God. That person takes that gift or is sent with that gift into a place, and then after a while, that gift begins to build a governing body of believers. Right. It can't happen without that gift. Right. That gift actually draws people to it. When they come to that gift, the gift of God in that apostle then begins to equip and empower believers mm -hmm. to come into their sonship Mm -hmm. So that they can begin to manifest the kingdom of God, make a difference with their lives. So, right. in 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 that sense, they are equipped, they are empowered, they come into their purpose and identity, and then they are sent, released to make a difference or to manifest the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So, the third word that I like to use is the word "govern." There is a governing spirit mm -hmm. that is that goes along with the apostolic anointing. We see that. The word govern means to rule and reign with Christ right here and right now. Okay, so the apostolic churches are, are sensitive to what's going on around them, right. both spiritually and naturally. Yeah. They will speak out. They will confront a thing. Absolutely. They will. They have that what I call that rotor rooter ministry, where they'll right. they'll actually. I've seen apostles deal with an issue that's in the climate or in the territory, yeah. and it just seems like no matter what they do, man, they'll zero right in on it and deal with yeah. it and deal with it and deal with it until it finally breaks. Yeah. Whereas a pastoral anointing won't do that, and it's not to put pastors no, down whatsoever. No. It's just, it's just to show a different function right. of ministry. Now, Apostle David, we have. We know that in this apostolic church there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers working together, okay, right. to perfect or equip the saints for the work of ministry. Now, we see a lot of people that call themselves prophets now that are outside the church, right. moving from place to place to place, operating in prophecy. Mm -hmm. what, what say ye? I say it's out of apostolic order because notice he said that he set some in the church. Now, at that point, he was talking about a local church there in, in the Corinth. So the ministry of the prophet is not to be out here running around all over the country holding his own meetings and giving out words to people. His function is to be in the church uh, helping and assisting the apostle because anytime you look at the apostles and prophets together, you always see the apostles come first because God said he set first in the church apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. So they have a function, but it's not the function. we got too many people today trying to be an Old Testament prophet, mm -hmm. see, because there was no church in the Old Testament. So you had the, 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 the prophets like Jeremiah and, and, uh, and Isaiah and different prophets and and uh, Samuel, and some of those just were sent, will go uh, and minister in different places, see. But that's not the way God intended it to be in the New Testament. They must be, for, it's great for a prophet to go out and minister, 
but they should be sent out by an apostolic church, then they go with the anointing of that house. And they don't just have the anointing uh, the, of the gifting they have, see, but they have an apostolic anointing. And therefore, uh, it's real easy when, when you live in the spirit like a prophet does. It's, they, they need some balance. They need somebody. Uh, and that's why that fathering anointing is, comes back into the play is because uh, there has to be correction. There has to be order, and it has to be maintained. And the only giftings I've ever seen in the church that was strong enough to do that was the apostolic anointing. You mean it, to, be, to be able to help a prophet yeah. to be balanced? Or? to be the best prophet he can be. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, until they come into submission, okay, mm -hmm. uh, until they come into the, to the, the apostolic uh, governing church or apostolic order, then they still have their gift. And they can they can yeah. operate and function to a degree, but they'll never be everything. Yeah, that and you know those of you be. that are watching that you're that you're prophetic. I I understand, okay, because there's a lot of pastors that have no clue how to deal with you and how to help you, okay. And yeah. so there are a lot of problems. They've, they've been rejected. They, people don't know how to identify with them right. and to help them, okay. Right. But you know what? In the apostolic, well, I'm not afraid of prophets. No. I'm not afraid of you. As a matter of fact, I'm here to help you. Yeah. But you need to get back into the church, all right? You need to find an apostle to work with, okay, that will help you. Build something. Build something. Be a part do something, of something with your life and not just be abused all the time because you're prophetic. I understand that. Yeah. So I don't, wanna, I don't want people that are watching to be turned off to the prophetic because we're not turned off to the prophetic at all. I mean, we, we're talking about this is part of the model. Mm -hmm. The apostolic church needs prophets right. in it, okay? Right. But when they're in it, they're going to come up. You know, we're all part of the same team, okay? Right. We're advancing the kingdom of God. We are lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah, we're I, promoting the kingdom of God. I see a good uh, illustration of this in, uh, in the book of Haggai. Zerubbabel, being uh, a type of the apostle, is building or rebuilding, restoring the temple, okay? Right. Haggai, the prophet, is there prophesying to the apostle, prophesying to the people. And saying things like the glory of this house is going to be greater than the former. Well, right. the, there you see the apostle and prophet working together. But what are they doing? Their, their roles are different, but they're building something or they're restoring yeah. something. Yeah. They're restoring the house of God. Yeah, see, there you go. You're talking about building. If you listen to apostles, they'll always come. You hear the same things over and over again because it's in the, it's in the DNA of the gift. Right. Build, restore, govern. Father, sons, and daughters. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? You hear that terminology all the time because it's, it's connected with the gift. Right. So we're talking about words being connected to the gift, all right? Mm -hmm. We're almost out of time. Apostle David, what is the? how do the people benefit, okay? I know there's ministers listening and leaders listening, but how, you know, we need to tell the people mm -hmm. what is the benefit to them. The Lord showed me a couple of weeks ago something that uh, I never really thought about. God has a purpose for every everybody. We know that from Ephesians chapter 1. But we, a, an individual will never know the fullness of their purpose until they know the purpose of the church. And the purpose of the church that we don't have time to go into in detail, but the purpose of the church is to restore or to establish kingdom culture wherever they're placed. Well, in most churches, there are people sitting in the pews. You've got just a very few people that are doing anything for the kingdom. Most of them are just coming and sitting because they, they don't feel like they have any value, don't have any function. But see, this is one thing the apostolic will do. It releases the saints, and, 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 and it helps to discern what is in the saints so that everybody has a function. Everybody has a part of the body. Everybody has a purpose. And I've been absolutely amazed because it's not something that I made happen, but it's just something that, that, that the gift has made happen in seeing the number of people in our particular church who have been activated in mm. ministry. This is what happens when you get under the ministry of the mm. apostle. You become activated in your own spirit. You mm, find your good. place. That's a good word. And yeah. you begin to be, be able to function uh, in what God has called you to do, not just in the church, but also outside the church yeah, and wherever God places you for the kingdom's sake. That's good. Thank you, Apostle. Mm -hmm. And you know, those of you that are watching too, that's what Paul said. He said, I desire to come unto you 
that I might impart some spiritual gift that you might be established in. That's one of the reasons why we need to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. And let's get involved with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. There are people I know that you're watching, and you know, maybe there's not an apostolic work in your city right now, but pray one in. Yeah. And you can come to, you know, our meetings, you know, our apostolic meetings. You can you can glean from what we're sharing. But I want you to know this. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. There is a church that Jesus is building. Mm -hmm. This church is strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Everything that can't be shaken is being shaken right now. We see that. But I want to encourage you that none of this, th uh, none of the things that are happening has caught the Lord by surprise. Right. He has a people. He has a remnant. Yes. And we're, we win this thing. At the end of the day, these kingdoms, all these kingdoms of the world will be subdued. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Apostle David, let's just pray before we go. Pray for the people that are watching. Okay. Amen? Well, Father, we thank you today for the revelation of what you're doing today. We know you've done so many great and wonderful things in generations gone by. But, Lord, we thank you for our day and for your plan and your purpose. And I pray that the eyes of the understanding of those that have listened today, those that have come in contact with this program, Father God, I pray that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened and they would be able to see, Lord, exactly what, where they fit, where they are able to function, what, what's their place. And, Father God, that they may be able to see the function of the church and of the ministry of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher in this day and time. And, Father, we bless all the people today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Apostle David. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Remember to go to the website, www.jonasclark.com, and we'll see you next time. Just open up your mouth and shout to the Lord.